Blancpain sent us this tribute to 50 Fathoms No Red. It has a little logo at 6 o'clock. What is it about? Find out. RJ, I really like this watch. It's a very vintage inspired dive watch. So what's so special about it? I think the special thing about this uh, tribute to 50 Fathoms is mm -hmm. that it's uh, based on a watch from the 60s basically, mm -hmm. uh, where Blancpain made a watch for German combat swimmers, also oh. Kampfschwimmer. Yeah, and that's interesting. <laughs> in the 60s, um, people got aware that radium was this radioactive material yeah. and it was bad for your health, basically. Mm -hmm. So it was used, radium was often used for the loom on the hands and the, mm -hmm. and the dial. And at some point they stopped. And to indicate that, uh, Blancpain put a logo on a dial with this, this yellow circle with uh, three red segments on it and it says no radiations. So in that case, the Kampfschwimmer, when they strapped on this watch- They were safe. They were safe and they knew, hey, I'm safe because it has this logo, I guess, because to me, it's a bit strange that you need to put a logo on a watch that it is uh, not hazard for your health. Yeah. I, I can't just imagine that, you, that they did that, but um, apparently they did. The originals uh, I've mm -hmm. seen, uh, I did some research and uh, there are a couple of pictures floating around okay. on the internet of that watch. And uh, this watch looks super similar to the original one. And I like the logo because I like the color setting, of the, yeah, the yellow and the red. Um, so basically, it's a, a, a tribute to 50 Fathoms, no red, meaning no radiations. No radiations, And yeah. the original one was referred to as a Bund, no red. And Bund stands for Bundeswehr, which is the German uh, armed forces. Okay. So they used this watch in the 60s. And they were all uh, safe because, uh, well, it didn't use any uh, radium anymore. Nice. Uh, and for the rest, yeah, it's, it's very vintage inspired. It's nice. It has these, uh, these uh, yeah, uh, Volpatina uh, mm -hmm. markers, Volpatina um, uh, filled hands. And the same color you will see on the, on the diving bezel. On the diving bezel, yeah. I noticed that when, uh, when Blancpain delivered this watch mm -hmm. to our office last week, that you were very excited about it. I was because I really like uh, Blanc and I think it's a cool watch, very vintage inspired, but from the other side, very modern, I would say. It's gorgeous. I mean, the brand is super cool. Maybe they should manage their marketing activities in a bit different way. Uh, but I really love the brand and I, ha I think that this brand has such a cool potential to develop and be even more recognizable than it is today. Yeah, but because in fact, the, everyone thinks that the Rolex Submariner, not everyone, but a lot of people think yeah. that the Rolex Submariner was the first proper diver. But it wasn't, yeah. But at least yeah. Blancpain beat them to it. It's not the first dive watch because there were other watches uh, before, like the uh, Omega Marine, for example, from yeah. 1932, that was already water resistant and you but could swim with they it. they weren't dive watches, I mean, tall dive watches. This is perhaps the first modern yeah. dive, dive watch, watch. With, a, with a diving scale bezel and... Um, um, Proper water resistance. It's a uh, 50 yeah. fathoms, which translates into a, a 90 point something mm -hmm. uh, uh, meters. Um, so it was a proper tool watch, and um, yeah, they were very quick with it. I think in, it, it was introduced in '53, mm -hmm. and in '52 they started development um, with the then Blancpain CEO. He was a, a diver himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he knew. Uh, how important the proper dive watch was because it, well, people, it was his hobby basically. Yeah, and yeah. people's lives are depending on a dive watch, yeah. at least at that time. Um, today they depend on diving computers, I guess. But yeah, I uh, guess. yeah so. and, and this watch looks very similar to the original one, and I think it, get, it gets way too little credit for what yeah. it is. And, exactly. Um, I think collectors and enthusiasts, they know about the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. Yeah, but. But uh, the, the bigger audience still. It's yeah. more focused on the Rolex Submariner, perhaps the Seamasters that mm -hmm. came again a bit later in 57, yeah. the Seamaster 300. But this Blancpain is uh, something special. Yeah, it is. And about the watch itself, it's uh, the diameter is 40.3 millimeters, so mm -hmm. it also probably fits your wrist. Yeah, it fits very... Try it on. Yeah, I can try it on. And what I love about it is that the uh, strap has holes everywhere. Yeah, it, it's uh, you can. So uh, I can easily uh, wear it with, uh, while having like very very tiny wrist. The watch is also the thickness of the watch is uh, thirteen point twenty three, so yeah. it's uh, quite okayish for a diving watch. I think modern diving watches in general they are thick. Yeah, are much are much bigger than this. Yeah. So it's a very modest sports watch basically. Comes with an in-house movement caliber eleven fifty one, 
with a four day power reserve for 100 hours in total and uh, by two barrels. And um, I've been visiting the Blancpain manufacturer mm -hmm. uh, in, in 2019 when we still all could travel. And it was very interesting to see what they all do in house. Um, Blancpain also had the FPK movements in the past, so they purchased it and then they, they don't use the PIGA mm -hmm. name anymore, so it's all Blancpain movements. And Blancpain doesn't only create movements for their own watches mm -hmm. because they have a fairly low production, yeah. uh, but also for other brands, including Breguet, for example. Okay, and tell me, because this is a limited edition, uh, how many pieces will be produced and what's the cost of this stunning dive watch? So the Tribute to 50 Fathoms, uh, mm -hmm. no red, is limited to 500 pieces. Okay. So that's, that's a lot. That's I a think for Blancpain it's a yeah, lot, it's but a on lot, the other hand... For a watch <laughs> enthusiast, not... Not, not necessarily. No, I yeah. mean, it's, it's a, I think it's a super stunning watch. And yeah. I feel they need something like this in the backbone yeah. of the collection. Yeah. Exactly. For sure, these uh, 500 people, they will be super satisfied yeah. after buying this one. And I think so. And in the past, they did a very similar watch, mm -hmm. I think in 2010 or 2011. Yeah. Also the No Red uh, logo. Um, same case, but it had modern uh, Luminova colored mm -hmm. uh, uh, hands, uh, our markers and, and bezel, and the dial was a bit different. Th this has a deep black matte, yeah. matte uh, uh, black dial, and uh, that one had, was, I think, even sunburst. Or, mm -hmm. But yeah, this is a proper vintage inspired. It is. The price is 13,290 euros, including uh, VAT. VAT. And yeah, only 500 pieces. And I feel that uh, I get it because something that's limited, it's, uh, uh, there's more push, there's more pressure for you to buy mm -hmm. it because they're oh, only 500. And we saw with the Hodinki piece that they were went out in a few minutes. Uh, th those were 250 pieces mm -hmm. or 300 pieces. Um, so I feel that um, Blancpain was a bit too much on the safe side here with 500. Yeah. I'm afraid, but... Um, Beautiful watch, and if you can get one and you, 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 you love it and you are able to get one, you will not be disappointed. It's a beautiful, It is. Stunning it's so watch. stunning, yeah. We published an article today on the release of this uh, Blancpain, March 15th, and there are more details uh, in there about this watch, so check it out on fratellowatches.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell for more uploads. Auf Wiedersehen, Schnitzel. Auf Wiedersehen, Schnitzel. Thank you.